Ladies and gentlemen, uh, happy weekend. Um, we are going to do a really quick video, and I say really quick, and I'm really going to try to make it quick, about LOL diagrams. This is a Unit 7 Energy, and an LOL diagram, just kind of taking a look at the per picture. First off, you see the LOL. Um, it will show you energy flow of a system at several points in time. So very similar to the pie chart. Pie charts, however, these are actually now bar charts. Um, you might have seen them in chemistry last year called energy bar charts. Basically the same thing. There's a few differences, though. The first one is in the big old circle is where you're going to put your system. If you're hoping for energy to be conserved in your system, you want to include every last possible thing that could have ever had or possessed or stored that energy. So um, we'll take a look at a better example of that as we go on. Um, you can see in the L's we have the E G E K E S E G, and then in the second L you can see that I added a second one here. Or I'm sorry, a fourth uh, energy storage E internal. That is um, because we always say that we start with no heat. Heat can be generated from the original energy that we started with. However, um, it is never in the first portion and you'll see why when we start looking at these a little bit in more depth so i think the best way to actually do this is to look at an example and we are going to go into an example where we're just going to look at a ball starting at rest at the top it gets faster as it moves down it's going to be right before it hits the ground um, so it's going to have a really large velocity and then we are also going to look at once it hits the ground. So that's at while it hits the ground and it is at a zero velocity. So um, first thing to do is note that we have one, two, three, four different places that we are looking at. So we're actually going to uh, create a L O L O L O L diagram, a little diagram. So let's do this. Actually, I'm going to space this out. Let me back up so we can really make this worthwhile. So, L, O, L, O, L, O, oh man, we're running out of room, L, and we can use that last bit there. Um, I guess I can back it up. So, um, so what I can do is I could title that A, title that B, title that C, and title that D for the different locations. And of course, I want to write out my energies E, K, or E, G, E, K, E, S. Um, reason why I do this is to remind myself to ask the questions, are these energies present at each and every individual point? Um, so I'm just going to quickly do that for each and every one. So I can kind of just do a checklist. Um, does not matter if the order is mixed up or things like that. Um, then I want to choose my system. In this case, I know the ball must be in my system. I also have to include the earth in my system. Um, the reason why I need to include the earth is because the object would have no energy stored gravitationally if there wasn't the earth pulling down on it. So that has to be included. Um, I'm also going to include the floor in it because at the end I noticed that some of that energy has actually gone E internal and I just realized that because there is a collision and so the floor probably grabbed some of that heat due to the vibration so I'm going to have to include that in there as well and that means you need to write that in each one of these circles common question I get is um, can I change my system throughout um, answer is no. Once you pick your system, you should stick with it because then you can say that energy conservation either occurs or does not. Um, one of the other things to notice about the system that um, you select, as long as there's not an external force acting on it, aka the floor would have been an external force acting upon my system, um, we can say that um, energy is conserved. So the FG that we normally would have seen, that's not an external force, as well as um, the floor creating that um, collision, that is not an external force. So I'm pretty safe to say that energy is conserved. Whenever I say energy is conserved, that means the total amount of energy in any one of these diagrams is the same everywhere. So um, if I have energy in A, I must have that same exact amount of energy in B, C, D, so on and so forth. So um, in order to start this thing off, I'm going to start off with E, G, having a whole bunch. Um, I'm going to actually label it as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The reason why I put E, G with so much is because it has a really large height. Um, it's really high off the ground, and we know E, G is based upon height. 
So um, from A to B, um, you notice that it has lost some height. So I'm gonna make that only, let's say, three bars. And now the question is, where did the other two bars go? And you'll notice that it went into the motion of that object. And I just want you to notice I have five bars of energy in my first one, and I still have five bars of energy in my second one. Um, so no energy has lo been lost in my system. If you go back to our energy skate park, it would be the same thing as me saying the pi remain the same. Um, part C, um, I am, oh, this is a really good thing. Um, the question is, where is the ground level? Where is the potential energy or EG is equal to zero? And I'm going to put my zero point right at the ground. So this thing might still have a bar of EG. Um, so if it had a bar of EG, that means that EK is at its highest, which means that would be four bars, one, two, three, four. And you still see that we have a total of five there. And then in part D, you realize that it finally hits the ground and all of um, it's not moving. So I know e, or it has no height. It's not moving. Um, I just lost my diagram. It's not moving. Um, it is not springing back. Um, in this case, we're going to say that it was a piece of clay or maybe it was just a ball that just flattened out really quickly. Um, so there is no ES, there is no EK, which means all of my energy did not leave my system. It is just all in E internal due to the heat, due to the sound, due to the vibrations that was created. Um, so you will see later on in the examples, um, I'm going to ask you guys to do the worksheet. Um, you will see in the examples that there may be cases where you have a ball that is, let me draw this out, that is flying through the air and it ends up at two different points. Um, what you can do is you can if, say that this is ground. You don't necessarily have to say that this is my zero marker. If you want, you can move the zero marker up here. And, um, as long as the ball never goes below that mark, you are safe. Um, so in this case, you could actually say at this point, there is zero energy stored gravitationally because it has zero height. Um, that is, again, assuming that the zero marker is at where the lowest point that the ball ever makes. However, you could also solve this problem by putting the zero marker at the ground, and then you would just say it started with some height to begin with. Either way you cut it, that's okay. Um, you can play around with that, and we will take a look at other examples throughout the unit to figure that one out. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you guys on Tuesday. We will start working on this. Make sure you have that worksheet done for Wednesday. Take care.